On Friday the 13th of March, Scottish football was brought to a standstill as necessary steps to slow the spread of coronavirus saw every game postponed indefinitely. While the timing was not ideal, third were playing fourth and second were playing first in the Premiership alone, hindsight has probably revealed that if anything these postponements came too late. I'm not here to comment on the UK government's incompetence, criminal negligence and lack of leadership, mainly because I don't have about six hours. There's been plenty incompetence and lack of leadership in the SPFL too. But enough about Neil Doncaster. Later we'll talk about the awful TV deal he presided over, but first let's look at where we are. After the games had been postponed, there was about a month of indecision and fumbling, followed by a rushed vote with about as much transparency as a Swiss banker in a sandstorm. The result was that the 2019-20 season for the SPFL Championship, Division 1 and Division 2, was ended with placings awarded on an average points basis and the possibility that the Premiership would go the same way as soon as UEFA would ratify it. The upshot of this would be Hearts, Partick Thistle and Stranraer being relegated as the bottom team in their respective divisions, despite being close enough to the teams above them that they would genuinely believe that they had a chance of finishing higher if the season were to be played out. In a rare sensible move from the SPFL Blazers, they appointed Anne Budge, chairperson of Hearts, to lead a committee on league reconstruction, just as she was preparing to launch her toys as far out of the pram as they would go. Don't get me wrong, relegating Hearts just because they'd been consistently the worst team in the Premiership for the majority of a seven-month period would have been sort of unfair. But rejecting a resolution on that basis alone assumes that a perfect solution exists. I humbly submit that if a perfect solution was available, someone would have thought of it by now. Admittedly, if a perfect solution was put forward, it's a bit of a stretch to assume everyone would agree it was perfect and almost impossible that the SPFL would actually go for it. All this being said, I put it to you that taking legal action against such a decision, effectively going to war with an organisation your business relies on for survival, in the middle of a global crisis is not a productive way to proceed. So extending an olive branch by asking Budge to lead a committee on league reconstruction, a committee that will almost certainly recommend scrapping relegation for one season, even if that changes the amount of teams in the various divisions, was politically savvy. This had led to much discussion on what format league reconstruction should take. If you've read the title of this video, then you'll know that I shall be putting forth my opinion, otherwise known as the correct one. But first I need to respond to the chairman of my own team, Dave Cormack, who has expressed the opinion that whatever restructuring we do for next season, it should be a temporary measure and not something we adopt going forward. His rationale is reasonable enough. The worst time to be making binding, long-lasting decisions is in the middle of a crisis. We might feel that change is needed, but rush a decision and we might end up with something worse. In a sense, he's right, but only as long as you view this in a vacuum that you don't accept that the SPFL was in need of reconstruction anyway and view reconstruction now solely as a response to the crisis. The other way of looking at this situation is an opportunity to do what we should have been doing anyway. All this crisis has done is forced the more reluctant parties who were a barrier to positive change to come to the table. Let's face it, we all know that we need more than 12 teams in the Premiership. If you don't know that, you probably work for the BBC. I'm sorry, but I really need to take this point as a premise. If you'd like me to go into detail on why a bigger premiership is better, let me know in the comments. I will make that video and you can be the only one to watch it because everybody knows that we need more teams in the premiership. If you're wondering why I had a dig at the British Bias Corporation a moment ago, it's because of this article where they respond to fans' suggestions for how to reconstruct the league. Because if you're going to reconstruct the league, it's a good idea to listen to the people whose money you couldn't do without. No, not them. But while we're on the subject, this article makes something clear right out of the gate. Depending on who you listen to, whatever format the Premiership takes must involve four league matches between Celtic and Rangers per season. Never mind the fact that Sky want it. The clubs themselves want it. I'm not sure the fans do, but who cares about the fans? It's a simple concept. Fixtures become more prestigious the rarer they are. 
Imagine Rangers are coming to town and it's the only time you're getting a home game against them that season. Of course, if you're St Johnston, you don't have to imagine. There's a lot riding on that game. You've got one chance to beat them and if you do, they can't undo that on your turf later on that season. Even if they beat you at Ibrox, they've only got as many points against you as you have against them. They don't have two other games to pull a full reversal on you. Last season, Aberdeen played against Rangers seven times. Four league games plus both cups and the Scottish Cup tie went to a replay. By the time the seventh game came around, our players clearly didn't give a damn. They'd already knocked Rangers out of both cups, winning in Glasgow three times. It was getting to the stage where we had to let them win one just so nobody would mistake us for a good team. I digress. If you really want as many old firm games as possible and you don't think repeated fixtures has any impact on intrigue, why not split the Premiership into two groups right at the start? One group of 10 can play each other four times, while Celtic and Rangers play each other 36 times. See how quickly that gets stale. All this to say, I don't care if we have four league games between Celtic and Rangers in a season. They're interesting games to watch, and they'd be even more intriguing if there was less of them. I do care about Scottish football, which means I don't give a damn about the only two clubs that we can guarantee will survive this crisis come what may. It doesn't matter what we do, Celtic and Rangers will definitely survive, so we don't have to worry about them and we certainly don't have to pander to them. But what of the TV money, I hear you ask? Good question. Look, the problem isn't so much that Scottish football sold its soul to TV a long time ago. The problem is the bargain basement price we sold it for. £30 million a year sounds like a lot of money until you find out that Sweden got £50 million. Sweden! Who was negotiating our deal? Gil from The Simpsons? Nope, it was this guy. He was so desperate to get a deal done that when Sky played hardball, he surrendered so fast that French soldiers are making jokes about him. The situation we're in now means that we might have to renegotiate the deal anyway, and when we do, we need to get rid of that four old firm game clause. Sure, Sky will want to take away a chunk of money for that, until we say that in that case, they don't get to show any old firm games. We'll sell the rights for that to someone who will pay. It's not like the SPFL aren't holding any cards here, it's just that their hand has been played poorly since, well, ever. Now that we've got the whole Celtic versus Rangers thing out of the way, we can concentrate on structure. The likely setup, at least in the short term, is 14 10 10 10. This is quite simple to achieve. Nobody gets relegated, and the top two teams from the Championship, Division 1 and Division 2, are promoted into the division above. Brora Rangers and Kelty Hearts, champions of the Highland and Lowland leagues respectively, are promoted into Division 2. Every division from the Championship down functions like it always has. The Premiership would see only 26 games before everyone has played each other home and away, so some sort of split would probably be in order. Comparisons have been made to the Danish Superliga, as it has 14 teams, but honestly, I don't think their complicated playoff system, which could feasibly see the team that's bottom after 26 games qualifying for Europe, being a good model to replicate here. It's probably better to have a top six and bottom eight, or vice versa, playing each other another two times. This would preserve the precious four Glasgow derbies, for those who care about that. In terms of a response to coronavirus, it makes sense, because we could push back the start of the season and only play 26 games if needed. I must admit, I could live with this model, but whether or not you adopt it really depends on if you're happy with most of the teams getting 40 games a season and the rest only getting 36. Are 40 games too much? Not if you look at the English leagues, but perhaps what works in England doesn't work here. There is an alternative method where 10 teams play 36 games and 4 play 37, which I think would be better but not as easy to understand, so maybe I should explain that in a separate video. Either way, I think the format of a 14-team Premiership would be better than the one we have for 12 teams, and nobody loses out in the short term. They are either promoted or still where they were. If this is the best we'll get, I can accept it. And therein lies the problem. It's clear from that statement that I don't think the SPFL have it in them to do any better. And we could do better. 
My major reservation with this system is, even if implemented, it might just be a temporary measure. There's an appetite for restructuring the league in the short term because of the crisis, but not for a long term commitment. Changing to this system is easy, especially right now. Changing from it, not so much. If you want to go back to a 40 team SPFL, you're going to have to relegate three teams out of 10 from Division 2, or relegate less, but not have promotion. If you want to change even the 44 teams to a different structure, you'll probably have to scrap relegation for a season. This is the only point in time in which scrapping relegation will make sense. So whatever the end game is, we should change to it now. 14-10-10-10 is okay, just okay, if that's what we're using going forward, but it is not a good idea to use it as a stepping stone to something else or a stopgap before re we revert back to what we have. And I understand Dave Cormack's concerns about making decisions in the time of crisis. I really do. But the fact is, when times are good, the SPFL Blazers are neither competent nor willing enough to make good long-term decisions then. In Scotland, when the brown stuff hits the fan, that's generally the time people get their act together and get things done. The other reason I mentioned the BBC article is because it asked for views from the fans. I mean, I'm a fan and I wasn't aware of this consultation, but hey ho. I'm just saying the fans had ideas, and if you want to see them all you can read the article. I'm just going to concentrate on the one that is closest to my idea, and the response it gets in the article. Michael's suggestion is a 20-team Premiership and a 22-team Championship. You can see by his playoff suggestion that he just wants to carbon copy the English model. When I was drawing up my plans for what I think should happen, a 2022 structure was where I started, but I evolved it slightly. I'll get to that. First, I'd like to take you through the responses to this idea from Thomas Duncan, writer of the article. His first response is, Madness. Yes, I do understand this might be slightly tongue-in-cheek, but as the response goes on, you get the feeling that Michael's suggestion is not getting the respect it deserves. Answering the who benefits question, Thomas Duncan begins with as crazy as it sounds, before admitting that nobody loses out while many, obviously, benefit. So not crazy then. He also points out that it would be easier to pass because it doesn't involve making 42 teams into 44. Then under what are the issues, he begins with where do we start? Guess where he starts? The old firm games. I don't care. Any other objections? Oh, the old mid-table nothing to play for by January fallacy. Do I need to make that why bigger divisions are better video? He also suggests that more relegation places and playoffs add to the excitement, which is technically a positive, but not everyone likes playoffs. The actual downside of Michael's suggestion isn't mentioned in the article. Two divisions can be very cutthroat. If you're relegated from the Premiership, it would take just one more bad season to fall out of the league altogether. There probably shouldn't be just one division between the Premiership and the Highland League, especially when there are currently three, and the championship would not be the stepping stone to success that we might hope. Anyone that gets promoted from the Highland or Lowland Leagues would probably benefit from a 10-team SPFL division in which to cut their teeth before making a push to get into the Premiership. Since there'd probably be a golfing class between the top of a 22-team championship and the bottom, promoted teams might find themselves coming up against bigger teams too soon. Which brings me to my suggestion for how to restructure the SPFL. Call it the McLeod model. As you've probably gathered, I'm good with a 20-team Premiership. That leaves 22 teams to be sorted, right? Wrong. There'll be 24, because I'm promoting Brora and Kelty Hearts in this model. The Championship now becomes 14 teams, because why should it be the Premiership that gets to have all the fun with mid-season splits and four games against half your opponents? The Championship can do that just as easily. Like I said, I could go into more detail about how to organise this. If you want that video, let me know. Division 1 would of course take the remaining 10 teams. Et voila! You have your three divisions. There are immediate benefits to several clubs. For a start, 
the top eight from the Championship all immediately join the Premiership. The likes of Cove Rangers and Edinburgh City, instead of just retaining their promotion, actually get into the Championship. Nobody is worse off. I mean, Wraith Rovers will find that most of their opponents are the same as this season, but they will be in the Championship. Longer term, stability is an easier goal to achieve. You had to be one of the top 20 teams in the country or risk dropping out of the Championship. Now you have to be in the top 30. I'll get to that. Similarly, there are 34 places above the bottom tier instead of 32. So that's the structure, 2014-10. Now is the opportune moment to do this. At no other time would it be acceptable to have no relegation from any division and promote 8 teams into the Premiership and 12 teams into the Championship respectively. Which brings me directly to the topic of promotion and relegation. How many teams would I put up and down from each division? Well, that depends. Here's where I need to take a deep breath because we're going to have playoffs. Hear me out. I know playoffs are not for everyone and I understand the reasons why. Your league position should matter. You don't spend a whole season earning a particular spot only for some team that finished below you who you've, you've already played two or four times to nick the glory in an appendix. Yes, this generates excitement, but it's artificial excitement. You've earned a place over a long, hard season, haven't you? Just look at the English system, which, if you remember, Michael was suggesting. In the Championship, the teams in 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th play off for a final spot in the Premier League. But how often does the team that finishes 3rd go on to win? Less than half the time. So that's a good argument against the English model, but that's not what I'm suggesting. The playoffs that I'm advocating for all have one thing in common. All playoff games are between teams that never played each other in the regular season. The hard work put into the regular season still counts. Let me explain step by step. I believe that variety is the spice of life. To prevent things going stale, there needs to be the potential for a good number of new opponents per season. So, from the 20-team Premiership, you need to come in the top 16 to be guaranteed safety. The bottom two teams are relegated. 17th and 18th place still have a chance of staying up. Meanwhile, the top two teams from the Championship are promoted. 3rd and 4th join the 17th and 18th from the Premiership in a group of four. The basic idea is that every team in this group will play each other twice, once at home and once away, and the top two will be in the Premiership the following season. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, I thought you said no games against teams you've already played. Indeed I did. For the Premiership teams, their two results from games against each other in the regular season are carried forward, they don't have to play each other again. The same goes for the third and fourth championship teams. Their two most recent games against each other, specifically their post-split fixtures, will be carried forward also. That means all four teams play four playoff games and not six. This resolves the cutthroat nature of the playoffs. You might get a chance to rectify one bad result with good performances in your other games. It also addresses another criticism of the playoffs that where you finish in the regular season should ultimately decide where you end up. The teams that came 17th and 18th in the Premiership didn't come last. They didn't even come second last. They deserve a chance to save themselves. Similarly, the teams that came third and fourth have earned a, track, a crack at promotion, but certainly haven't earned it automatically. Each team has four games to prove they're better than the teams from the other division. In case you're worried about teams getting too much of a head start, that's not true. Even if the other team from your division beat you twice in the regular season, so they're starting on six points while you're starting on zero, survival or promotion is still in your own hands. Oh, and by the way, because the playoff is taking on a group format, nobody's getting promoted or relegated on the back of a penalty shootout. Regular football matches will almost certainly settle it. Speaking of regular football matches, this playoff structure, far from devaluing the regular season, increases it. If you're playing a team around you in the league, it's a genuine six-pointer, knowing that a win in this game might count double come the end of the season. So, 
the Premiership will get between two and four new teams every season. Naturally, I would propose a similar system between the Championship and Division 1, except that the only automatic relegation should be the team that comes last in the Championship, and the winners of Division 1 are the only ones that get automatic promotion. Second and third bottom in the Championship and second and third place in Division 1 enter the playoff group as I described. As for the bottom of Division 1, last place gets relegated. Sorry. The winners of the Highland and Lowland League play a two-leg playoff to go straight into Division 1. There you have it. That's how I think we should restructure the SPFL on a permanent basis. Before you ask, yeah, I know I'm just one guy. And no, I don't think the SPFL will adopt this idea just because I suggested it. But I also don't think they will come up with anything better, and let's be honest, neither do you. In the meantime, let me know if you want to know more about how to play a 14-team division, and I'll even agree to do a video on why bigger divisions are better if so much as one person wants it, because nobody deserves to live with the same delusions as Neil Doncaster. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you didn't, you have the right to remain silent. Bye for now.